Welcome to this week's end of day's update coming to you from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Wow, crazy times to be on the earth right here at the hopefully the peak or the end of the coronavirus. I know everyone's life has been disrupted. It sure is good to know the truth. It sure is good to know we're redeemed from the curse of the law. It's amazing Jesus was beaten for us that we wouldn't have to bear any of that. So thankful that he paid the price for us. So we are all are celebrating that we're redeemed from the curse of the law. But we're getting into every week the, the points that show us how close we are to the coming of the Lord. Man, it's it's crazy how every single week something happens that I, I shake my head and go, that happened, that happened, that happened. I have so many phone calls. People are, what, are we in the tribulation? What is the coronavirus? Now, in Matthew 24... Uh, right before verse 9, verse eight, talk, verse 7 and 8, talk about what it would look like right before the tribulation. In Matthew 24, verse 9, the trib starts. But right before that, Jesus gives us some indications of some things, and they're called birth pains. They're what we would call nowadays contractions. Man, when you see a woman going, when the contractions start in a woman, you head straight to the hospital. So the Lord was saying there's going to be some things that are like a woman going into labor. And you, you can't really get away from it. I've never seen someone that was getting ready to have a baby go, let's go play a little golf. No, the contractions take over your life. So that's what's happened with the coronavirus. Now, the, 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 in the Gospels, the rapture is not mentioned at all because it's a mystery, just like the church age is not mentioned. You can't get your rapture doctrine from the Gospels because it's not there. I like the qualifications. You know, in Luke 21, 36, Jesus said, pray that you might be accounted worthy to escape all these things and stand before the Son of Man. He's talking to Jewish boys there. I don't have to pray to be accounted worthy. I am worthy. The rules change after the resurrection. Those guys didn't, they weren't worthy because Jesus hadn't been raised from the dead. Once you get into the new covenant after he's raised from the dead, uh, we're him. As he is, so are we in this world. I, has nothing to do with my righteousness, has everything to do with his righteousness. He gets the glory, he gets the honor, he gets the praise, he gets magnified. And I hear people say, well, I don't, I don't know if I qualify for the rapture. Then I guess you got a bad strain of the blood of Jesus. No, his blood perfected you. He's already presented you holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight. So let's pick up with what what's happened around Israel this last week. Wow, this is so cool. All right, finally, on Monday, Benjamin Netanyahu and Benjamin Gantz finally formed a coalition government where they're going to share rulership. And eventually, uh, it's, right now, it's a six-month emergency rulership because of the coronavirus. But it is kind of cool, them both sharing the prime ministership. One will go 18 months, and the other one will take over for 18 months, actually about three years total. Intriguing that in July, they will annex Judea and Samaria. Now, you talk about an interesting season. The Palestinians are already freaking out about that because basically it's saying Israel's going to get the land back that they got in 1967, which they won perfectly through war. Now, the amazing thing about uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and Benjamin Gantz, uh, now, uh, it's interesting. I don't talk a lot about what rabbis say, but this is pretty wild. Rabbi Isaac Kaduri. In 05, the Messiah appeared to him. Jesus appeared to him. And he wrote in a letter saying when, when he dies, open that letter up after one year. After he died in 06, they opened the letter up and he said that I've come to know Jesus as the Messiah. Pretty amazing. But also he said other things that came to pass true, though, some of his prophecies. But some of his writings said, this is the crazy one. Some of his writings said that when the Messiah comes, there'll be two Benjamins ruling in Israel. And that basically that's crazy. It took a pandemic to force Israel to, to make a decision because they couldn't form a government. The government, they were, they were going to have another fourth election the last time I came to you last week. I was like, dear Lord, another election. This is crazy. So it is interesting to have a rabbi prophesy about that when the Messiah will come, two Benjamins will be ruling Israel. Man, that just gives me chills. So with that, you had Palestinians from, from Gaza fire rockets into Israel. You had Israel do a strike in Syria on our Iranian militants. Israel hit up by Palmyra in Homs. They hit a lot of leadership in the Iranian Guard and, and, the, uh, and the Syrian government that had sent some militia there. They're basing there. That's where Israel, the week before, took some missiles out. Even a few days before that, Israel took some more missiles out on the edge of the border of Israel. So this is like three events that Israel continually has to do to, to preemptively strike to protect themselves. You don't hear anything about it in the news, but it's in the Jerusalem Post, it's in Haaretz, it's in Debka, it's in the other places. So Israel's continually doing things to protect itself. Why? Because of their threats, just like Iran. Remember last week I talked about Iran talking about a nuclear submarine. It was going to be the way they were going to bring more nuclear power in, into play. This week, Iran unveiled all these brand new drones that they have and touting that uh, the drones could go uh, easily reach anywhere in Israel. Now they're very precise with their guidance system. So now you've got drones that can reach Israel. And that's why I talked 
talked about, Israel will have to preemptively strike Iran at some point to keep that from happening. So a lot of global things happening. You even have Kim Jong-un looks like that he might be uh, not doing real well in, in North Korea. So so much instability in the earth, but everything is getting ready for the Antichrist to come on the scene. It is intriguing to see all these different organizations push for one world order. And that's exactly what the Bible says would happen. You even have the, the Lutherans came out with a new Bible uh, this last week that it completely removes Israel from the Bible. I mean, how crazy is that? That you think you'd have a Bible and Israel's wiped out. And basically they said it was a political move to show their uh, uh, dis disdain for Israel. So you're watching, because the Bible says the Antichrist will change dates and times. So everything's being set up for that. So let's always go back to the scripture. What's the scripture say? These signs are precise. Every single week we get into it. I know it gets uh, long, but man, so many things are happening. So let's go through a few of the signs because a couple of them are exciting that happened in the last just few weeks. Number one, Israel made a nation in 1948. The fig tree buddy. Jerusalem won back in 1967. Jesus said the generation that sees those two events will not pass away until all is fulfilled. Uh, he said, I'm writing this to you so that you can know that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Then he said, the generation that sees that, you're it. So tag, you're it. Whether you like it or not, I hear people go, I don't believe that. It don't matter. I hear people say, I'm not comfortable with that. It don't matter. Uh, we're it. How wild is that that we are? We're so blessed. So then you have the Hebrew language restored. You got the Ethiopian Jews brought back. You got the fertility of the land of Israel. You got the revival of the Roman Empire. You got the Temple Mount Institute. You had water filling up in the ritual baths around the temple for the first time in 2,000 years. Now, it's pretty crazy. I didn't get into it, but Islam's not even able to meet in the mosque uh, because of the coronavirus. That's freaking them out. Anyway, let's go back to the signs. You have those, you had foxes show up on the Temple Mount uh, just a little while ago. That's absolutely amazing. You had fish showing up in the Dead Sea. That was prophesied years ago, that right before the coming of the Lord, uh, that would happen. You had the Sea of Galilee fill up. The rabbis are like, wow, I'll tell you, when you see the Sea of Galilee fill up, the Messiah is about to come. So all these things are signs for them to see Jesus is just about to come. So there's many, many more. You get into men will be lovers themselves. You have selfie sticks. Tons of signs, tons of signs. But then you go to signals, not just signs of the coming of the Lord. You've got signals uh, that they're happening as well. The Bible says that planets would be for signals for us. So you had blood red moons on Passover and Tabernacles. How wild is that? Four in a row on Passover and Tabernacles. NASA calls it a tetrad. So with that, uh, when, when's the last time you had that happen? Four in a row like that it was 1967 when Jerusalem was won back, 1948 when Israel was made a nation, and 1492 at the Edict of Expulsion when the Jews were kicked out of Spain. Pretty crazy. Then last year you had the Bethlehem Star, first time in 2,000 years. That's remarkable that when, when, when Jesus was born, the constellation was Virgo. This last year the constellation was Leo because he's the Lion of the tribe of Judah. So remember always we get into all these signs because he loves you so much. He wants you excited. He wants you expectant. Your strength will be tied to your joy. Could you imagine at the end of the race you're looking up going, oh, there's the finish line, getting bummed out? No, you're excited. Rapture teaching and end times teaching is not an escape theology. It's a hustle theology like a two-minute warning. So many more signals, many more signs. I think the amazing thing is, is that we are that generation. However you do the math, we're at, I hear people go, well, how, how long is our generation? We could get into all that, but it's us. So we're very, very privileged. Amazing that we get to be with him so soon. So what do we do? Help your local church, help your local pastor, be engaged, not disengaged, but engaged to do the will of God. We have a lot to do in a short period of time. We so appreciate you coming and watching this week. These are the grandest times ever for the church. Be expectant because you're all of a sudden going to see the King, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Wow. Bright and morning star, lily of the valley, firstborn from the dead. By himself he purged our sins. Wow. We're so blessed that we're his kids. Hey, check us out on Instagram. Check us out on YouTube. We have a new YouTube channel, Joe Morris Ministries on YouTube. We've got a lot of information we're getting ready to put on there that will help you. Go to the website, josephmorris.com. There are pictures for each one of the signs. So you can see a photograph connected to the signs. It really helps you uh, learn and grasp it when you see a photograph of it. Man, have a blessed, awesome week. Can't see what happens this week. When we come together next time, we'll see all these more signs pointing to the return of the King.
Thanks for joining us today at the end of day's update. If you'd like to be notified every time there's a new post, just go to the edu at josephmorris.com and subscribe to receive email alerts. If these posts and updates have been a blessing to you, please consider making a one-time donation to help get the message out or even becoming a monthly partner with Joseph Morris Ministries. Thanks again for tuning in to the EDU, and we'll see you next week.